I am going to introduce you yet another variation of the squeeze positions. Um, this one seems to start life as an automatic squeeze. You have gone through the due diligence phase and you've decided that a squeeze is appropriate and you look for your threats and the entries and where they lie. So you find you've got two threats. You find they're split between the two hands. So it looks like you're going to have an automatic squeeze. And then you discover uh, that the entry is in the wrong hand. Instead of being with the threat, is actually in the opposite hand. Well, that limits your options. You actually still do have a squeeze, um, as long as you've got crossover cards. You need to be able to reach the entry and have another one to get back to your threat and cash it if it's become a winner. The problem is that uh, you are squeezing dummy out of its crossover card or the threat that's, that's in the... I'm saying dummy because I'm thinking we cash the, the, uh, the, the squeeze card from um, the hand, from the declarer's hand. The, as usual, it could be the other way around. But imagine we are cashing the squeeze card in the, in the declarer hand and we have to go and discard, well, either the threat from dummy or the crossover card. So it becomes a positional squeeze. It only works if the person who is playing second is the busy player and is looking after the guard cards in the single threat and the entry threat. As long as they have to go make the choice before Dummy does, then you can choose what to throw away. And as usual, you're looking out for the card that beats the single threat. Um, if it's it's not a winner, that's the one you throw, and then you just try your luck on the central threat. So it's very similar to ones we've done before. Um, the the uh, key cards, you're still looking for your, your threats and the entries. Where, again, you look, where are they? But this is where you discover, oh, the entries in the wrong hand. Then the counts, count still applies. Um, squeezes, normal squeezes only produce one trick. Uh, onto making the plan, and you end up opposite the entry. That's where you need to be to uh, operate this squeeze, and watch out, as usual, for the card that beats the single threat. So you're all sitting comfortably, now you know what to do. So uh, this is a real hand, which uh, a friend of mine played, and I went over it uh, with that person, and it turned out that there is, we had a squeeze embedded in it. That wasn't the problem this person had. But uh, So let's have a look at this hand. Uh, the reason East is the dealer is simply because that's what happened in real life when this was played. Um, you have here a distributional hand. Uh, you have nine cards in two suits and a singleton, so very definitely distributional. So you have a heart. Um, uh, West is a random player. I'll just mention to you that I wouldn't bid two clubs in a million years, but that's, by the by, they're the opposition. And partner doubled, which, of course, can show various sorts of hands. Normally, a two-club double is merely showing a balance hand. Bidding a suit tends to show five-card suits. Uh, doubling tends to show four-card suits. And, of course, especially uh, a spade suit is um, a double. So he won't have uh, won't have five diamonds, won't have five spades, and won't have a good heart support. So, but but he doesn't guarantee actually owning spades. He could just be balanced with a three 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 four three hand. So pass now from the person who doesn't want to contribute. And this I thought is where the South player went wrong because since partners trying to play in other suits. I really feel that at this point South should bid two spades. It's technically a reverse in the sense you go past your suit, but that's, I think, the wrong way of looking at it. You should look at that if this partner has almost certainly bid the spade suit via the double. You're merely raising partners one spade to two spades. You are not, in my book anyway, showing extra values. But the actual player thought that it did show extra values, reversing values when you're nowhere close to that, of course. So, actually bids two hearts, um, and then 
uh, partner who, as you see, well, has a good hand, went and bid four hearts, because uh, partner is expecting, well, uh, more hearts, really, for this sequence. And so here we are in our contract. And they are on lead, and the lead chosen was the Ace of Clubs. And I despair sometimes. Uh, certainly when I give classes, I tell people that you, in the suit contract, you never, ever, unless you've got four of them, lead an Ace, because uh, well over half the time, you are creating a winner for the opposition. After all, South tends to be the strongest hand at the table, and is the person most likely to be owning the king of clubs at the table. And aces are for beating kings and queens, not for catching and having twos of clubs played from dummy on them. But that was what was led, and although it hasn't created a winner, at least it simplified things for us. Um, because one less thing for us to do to go and set up the king and queen of clubs. Uh, Three of clubs from the east hand, which is interesting. So east either has a singleton, unlikely, or three cards. And then there was a switch to the diamond. Again, that certainly suggests that that's a, uh, a three-card salute on the right. Well, let's analyse the hand. Uh, high time we did our due diligence. We have two club discards. I can throw away two of my spades. Why aren't I playing in spades? Whose fault is that? Oh, it's mine. Okay. Um, so I can throw away two of my spades, and um, the ace of diamonds can throw one from diamond. I've, I've got an almost certain spade loser. So after that, though, really, I've just got the heart suit to worry about. So I just need to bring in the heart suit with only one loser, which I've got good chances of doing, king and jack missing, um, and then I'll be easily able to make the contract. So I win in dummy. And I've got the 10. Now I can leave the 10 because I own the 9, 8, 7. And you do that to retain the lead to take a second finesse. But of course I expect to lose the first trick. It's most unlikely that he says the king and the jack of hearts. So the correct way to proceed is to start by leading the two to take your first finesse, and then you can lead the ten the second time in order to try and retain the lead in case East has a four-card suit. So uh, the three from Dummy, should we finesse against the king or the, um, or the jack? Well, since West Overcord, and it doesn't look on a very robust suit, I'm inclined to place... West with the king rather than the jack. So I am going to finesse. I play the nine. Always try and play cards which hide your holdings as much as you can. Um, I'm not sure it does much good here, but it's a generally good principle as declarer to uh, uh, to to conceal as much as you possibly can. And king, king, king. Ah, no. Okay. Well, never mind. Nine of diamonds, so that looks like a three-card suit, middle up, down. Win that one. Okay, now I lead my ten of hearts, and now I'm in the position to finesse. Well, one last thought. Um, I could, of course, play for the drop. Um, is Wex got doubleton, king, jack of hearts? That's a bit unlikely. More likely, he's got a singleton heart. And I should finesse against the king. I am going to run this and finesse against the king. Well, you can see why I never win any competitions. Um, I should have played for the... No, no, no. He's got three. I couldn't have done anything about it at all. So, uh, so okay. Well, that's most unfortunate. I now seem to be in a position where I have a certain spade loser. Or do I? As always, when we are in desperation, your thoughts turn to, can you actually make a squeeze to generate an extra trick out of nowhere? So, uh, let's go looking for threats. Well, I've definitely got a threat in the club suit. Um, the king, queen, that six is a threat because West bid clubs and surely he's got at least five clubs. In fact, I think he has got five because if he had six... I think he would surely have tried to see if partner had a singleton club and played a second club to see if partner could rough it. 
And do I have a threat in the spacesuit? Well, um, the 10 is a, would be nice if that was a threat. That means he'd have to have the king and the jack. Um, but the queen, I think, is a definite threat. You see, all these diamond plays he's been making, uh, they're not all that natural. With the ace on his own in dummy, if he had low spades, switching to a spade would have been a much more natural play for him. Or her, I don't know who the sex was, the actual player. So I'm reckoning West has the king, maybe the jack. But I don't need uh, that player to have the jack. I've got the position I was talking about earlier, where the, end, the, the threats are the queen of spades in my hand, the six of clubs in the other hand, so they're split. But the entry, the ace of spades, is not with... The Queen of Spades, not with the threat card. But that turns it into a, um, a positional squeeze. The squeeze card is going to be played from my hand, and it will only work against the player who plays second, and that's West. So I've got him. If I'm right about everything, he will be looking after the King of Spades and the club and uh, the deck. The only unfortunate thing, of course, I wish I'd cashed now the King and Queen of Clubs. I didn't want to in case they were going to trump something after all. Um, but I have what's, what's called an extended single threat here. The Six of Clubs is the threat. And, of course, they simply have to keep additional cards because of my winners, the King and the Queen. And while extended entry suits are, by and large, good things... Extended single threats are uncomfortable things. And you'll see that when I actually play off uh, my winners to execute the, uh, the squeeze. Uh, Ace of diamonds. Uh, well, I don't need the two of spades. And Ace of hearts is the to do. So, just throws away the club. Not the spade to go. Useless there. And finally, I play off my queen. Now, this should be the the magic moment where he has to decide whether to unguard the spade or the club. The trouble is, I won't know for sure because I haven't played off the king and queen of clubs. So I will not be... I really wish I... Because if, if I just had those two cards gone, I would only have the cards that matter and I would be able to watch very carefully to see what he discards. As it is, I'm going to have to guess, and he's throwing a club away. Uh, no, no, oh, sorry, let me go back one. I'll show you the full hand so you can see the problem. Let's undo. Right, so I'll show you the full hand here. You know, I'm still slow at this. Just get lost in the thing. There's his hand. As you can see, he does have the King of Spades to explain why he didn't go and switch to it. Um, he does have a five card club suit. They say, I'm not quite sure. When he goes and throws a club, he might have had a six card club suit and he might have a singleton King of Spades. I say, it's uncomfortable having an extended single threat. So uh, if you ever can cash the cards opposite the single threat, do so because it'll improve your chances of. And knowing what's going on. Well, as I've said throughout, I think he only started with a five-card suit, so I think that West has unguarded the club suit, so I'm going to go with my beliefs, and I'm going to um, uh, throw away the, uh, the spade, and as you can see, I've done the right thing, because when I reach this position, uh, there I am with King, Queen, and the last club, and he indeed he is unguarded. So I'll claim the full contract, so you can see the full hand. Oh, wait a bit. He should throw a spade. You can see the club threat. Um, uh, the club gives an option for an error by declarer. Um, the club means you have to guess whether... Uh, this is replying to Colin's uh, comment. Or please, please. Ah, right. I'm going to do that, Adam, before I move on. Um, right, so Colin, uh, if you throw a spade... Uh, you have no problems whatsoever. The declarer knows he's got... Oh, I see what you mean. A partner might have the Queen of Spades. Okay, yes, that's fair enough. He might decide to throw a spade, hoping his partner got the Queen of Spades and keep the clubs guarded. 
The other thing is he might throw a club and see whether you think he's kept clubs because he started with a six card six. So, so who knows? And say it's a uh, it demonstrates the position. You have split threats, but the entry is in the wrong hand. It's positional against the player who plays seconds, and a moral, do not keep extended cards opposite your single set if you... Uh, um, it wasn't the problem with the person who played it. The person who played it just misanalyzed it and started to catch the side suits first. Okay, um, now, Adam, yes. Um, yes, um, Alan. Yes, well, uh, shall I do it, or do you want to go and tell them about how to go and... I'll do it, right. Uh I now know how to operate a Zoom call, which I didn't last week, but Adam has educated me. If you actually click on the Zoom app or just Google Zoom and go into the Zoom page, there's a tab somewhere that says Join. If you click on Join, it will ask you for the ID number of the Zoom call you want to go and join. And uh, Adam... It, the, the number's in three parts, three digits, three digits, and four digits. You put those in, and it will take you to, and if you put in 942-660-1415, it will actually take you to this Zoom call, whenever I've created it, and then you will need the password. It will ask for that, and the password is squeezes. Absolutely brilliant. They all lowercase. So... You don't have to come to the table and wait for us to go and give you the link. The URL, uh, the, the long link, is is just another way of directly accessing it. But you no longer have to do that. It's going to be a repeating, um, uh, repeating Zoom call. So every time you want to go and join us, instead of coming here and waiting to be told, keep a note of those numbers or go to the IAC site. They're now on the IAC site and you can look them up there. Uh, link it, uh, join the call, put in the ID number, put in the password, and uh, and uh, I put that in. <laughs> yes, you can add it to my name, of course. Can't you? you make little notes about people, so you can put that in, and then they'll be there for you next week. There's about, I think, four more of these talks, and I'll ask then that I come to the end of everything that I wish to talk about. Um, have I said everything, Adam? Did I, I get all right? I think you have, except that we're going to uh, make a habit of starting the Zoom call a few minutes early, maybe 10 to or quarter to, and so people can get on and be ready to kick off at uh, three at, on the hour at 3 o'clock, so yeah. uh, that you can always come and chat for the first 10 minutes before the... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, feel free to unmute your microphone and... and uh, Join in the conversations which are going on. That would be nice to uh, exchange views with people. Okay, well, I'm going to move on, uh, and I'm going to move out. So here I am moving out, and here I am putting it so you can only see the south hand. South hand, there we go. And I am now going to look for another hand, and uh, there up here, I think board 10 is the one I want. Uh, Oh dear, I should have made a... Right, and I am now waiting for anybody to join the sound seat so we can have a chat about this hand and play it through. Hmm. Gosh, it's gone quiet. Come on, somebody new, have a go, it's not painful. Come on, B. Sit in the south seat. Come on, live a little. I'll go there. Oh, okay. Hi, welcome. Okay, put your microphone and chat to us. Make sure that we're all able to converse. Okay. Lovely. Okay, welcome to the show. Okay, uh, West is a dealer, which either means this was a real hand or it has some significance. I'm not sure. Which, uh, normally, because if it's just a contract, I start with a south hand and you, we just bid seven spades or something. So, uh, West passes, uh, your partner passes, and the next person bids three diamonds mm -hmm. a premium. Okay, you to go. What do you think is the right thing to do? 
I have a nice hand and uh, then 13, 17 points and a very good heart suit. I could bid the heart suit here to say, hey, I have a real heart suit and that, that should show to the partner that it's it's a, and he he should not have the points out of the three hearts. Okay, well, I would disagree with that in two ways, um, if you want to undo. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is uh, an average partner opposite any preempt uh, is about an eight count. Okay, okay. Uh, so with your seventeen count, mm -hmm. you have enough for game. And my fear of bidding three hearts would be that I miss game because partner just sort of says, "Oh, I'm a balance hand with eight, so I've really got nothing extra for partner." He expects an eight count. And you play in the part score. But with 17, I think you should be doing something more strong. Now, you're not strong enough to double and then bid again. So, yeah, you should be bidding game. Yeah. And my choice is, to, uh, no, no, double and then bid shows really strong hand. You know, oh. slam, slam interest hand. So, you're overdoing it with a double. You either bid four hearts or another option is to um, actually bid three no trump. These hands where you have a, even though you have a, a long major, um, these hands with uh, long suits often play very well in no trumps. So, uh, it, to my mind, it's a bit of a guess whether you bid four hearts or three no trumps. Uh, and I wouldn't have minded either bid. But I'd say the trouble with three hearts is you like to go pass, pass, pass. Oh, I've got ten top trumps. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, uh, I, the contract I want is four hearts. They say three no trump actually will, should be in your thoughts as an option here because you just hope to run the heart suit. And um, it's not as good as having ace to three diamonds because ace to three diamonds you can duck around or two and make sure you cut east off. But it is is a serious option. Come on, let's bid four hearts. Okay. I always choose the wrong option, so maybe that will happen with the squeeze too. Um, well, <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> okay, so what was the bid? Diamond. Okay, so the lead is a diamond. And you can see that indeed. What would partner have done here? Very interesting. He's got a nine count, so he's got a bit to spare, but he's absolutely flat. I say, you'd have been this, you see, without, say, the king of spades. Um, you still would have been three hearts. And now. Uh, now he should be passing. So I say, when you have these 17 counts, you normally have to do a bit more than just... Uh, it's worth remembering, an average hand per partner is eight. Imagine he's got an eight count. Where would you like to play? Anyway, you've done the wrong thing. Uh, obviously, you've got nine tricks on top, and if he's... Oh, he's, he must have six diamonds. Uh, well, he was third in hand and decided to, uh, to push the finish. This is not good. Um, uh, you look as though you're about to suffer a diamond rough today. Well, nothing you can do about it. Lest you do diligence later. Okay, Alan, uh, let me interrupt for a second. Um, I mm -hmm. can't remember um, Sal's name. Uh, not Shankar. Shankar. Could you, do you know how to turn your sound effects off? Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, so if you go, yeah, into, that, go into account and settings and then just turn sound off, please. Oh, yeah, that's Thank, good. That's thank you very much. I should have asked people to do that. Okay. It should be okay now, yeah. Okay. So three three diamonds and off we go. So, so if I look at the how many tricks I have, uh, this jack is obviously a single turn. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have... Um, I have the six hard tricks, then I have the two spade tricks, and one club trick, and looking at this, the king and ace, uh, so I have, I think I have at least one diamond trick here. I would be very surprised, but let's see what happens. <laughs> because uh, the king and the ace are uh, either side, so oh, it depends on how the heart split. I'm, no, I'm, no, 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 ace bid three diamonds. Oh, e He's open with a three diamond bid. Yeah, so he has he has six and three nine and three twelve and one thirty two. He's got a big diamond ace. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's why now I wish I we did three no trumpets. But carry on. Ah, okay. 
So let me, I, I don't have much to do here. Oh. No, you don't. And, uh, nor can you dissemble, really. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. That was my, yeah, okay. Oh, there's your diamond trick gone. So sad. Okay. Well, they've let you in. So the uh, the uh, analysis you did earlier was fine, except, of course, you counted in a diamond trick and that's disappeared. That's so, disappeared, yeah. Who need an extra trick? Um, what's your plan for getting an extra trick? Now I have... The only... The, basically, I... Uh, I don't have I don't have a plan yet for an extra trick. I see that I have one club loser, and how do I get rid of the club? What can I do? That? That's right. The easy way to get rid of the club users, a club loser. And given that this is a squeeze class, I'm going to say there is a squeeze somewhere. <laughs> no, no, no. You should be doing due no, no, no. diligence. So where where can I find extra tricks from? And there's an obvious place where you might find an extra trick. See, I can I can try to uh, the way it is is. If I try to do a finesse and I lose, I go down. If I try something, I could I could play rest for both the jack and the king of clubs, but that looks like uh, that looks like a certain way to lose a club trick to me. Exactly, that looks like a certain way to lose a club trick. And so, and the rest of the come on, like, I'll tell you the answer here. You've got jack ten nine of spades in dummy. There's every chance that the queen of spades drops, or maybe you can even roughing finesse against east, catch the ace king of. Spade, yeah. Jack, and maybe even a roughing finesse. We can take a decision later. But the spade suit is a serious chance to an extra trick, and you should be trying for that before you start desperation plays of dropping singleton jacks by leaving the queen at clubs. So, uh, so uh, I would draw some trumps first. I must say, having something roughed is embarrassing, but the spade suit is surely the way to try and get an extra I'm trick. Sure. That, but yeah, that's a good point. Okay, okay. So I need enough here, so I'll, I'll play along. Can we read anything into the three-level bone preempt with only six DS? Um, you need to be muting microphones, Kathy. That's Trump's done. That goes, that goes to Trump, and now... I have to take the speed ace king before... You do, I, and you've left an entry with the jack of hearts, so you're okay. So I'm okay. Now I'll go to uh, Jack of Hearts. And now your best shot really is that it drops because it's unlikely that he's got six diamonds and queen to four spades, but maybe it drops. Come on, let's go for it. Hey, Jack. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have to do that, yeah. Okay, I can tell you now, it's not dropping. Yeah. Very sad. So you haven't set up a spade winner, but what have you set up? Uh, I haven't set up a spade winner, but the spade 10 is a threat right now. It is. Do you have another threat? And I have the... Uh, I have the queen... I, I, I think my queen of clubs... Yes, is it a, is. This is one of the things where the... One threat is the queen in your hand, the ten is the threat in the other, and the uh, entry is in the wrong hand. The entry is, yeah, the queen. Oh, so you can only squeeze the second player when you play up all your... So let's hope West has the king, so king of clubs, so he's being squeezed. We know he's got the queen of spades. So I can... So I'm going to watch... Uh, yeah. okay, see what and happens. what are you watching for? Which card? I'm watching for the queen of spades. You are. That's the only thing you're interested in. Only one thing, yeah.
And um, I'll let you join the full show here, Shen Park. Um, he does have it. Excellent news. Will he throw the Queen of Spades? No, we can see the Ten of Spades in Dobby. Right. But I hope his partner's got the Queen of Queen of Clubs. Yeah. So, you haven't seen so I can drop the. Yeah, the, you haven't seen the Queen of Spades. Your single threat is not a winner. Now you cross your fingers and hope the squeeze works. And it has worked. Yay! And so we cash our ace. And come back to cash our fun. Well done. And we're really starting to get into much more typical hands here about how, you know, when you start, you're really just playing normal bridge. You do this, you do that, you try for it, and then you reach some sort of ending, and either you're playing for an over trick, which is by far the common situation where you use uh, squeeze plays in, in pairs competitions, or you reach desperation positions like this one. You really deserve to have made this already, but hey, at least you've got threats. And then suddenly the threats materialize into a full squeeze, and you've generated your trick. But always you start with due diligence, the normal bridge play. Well, or not always, but most of the time. That's how squeezes turn up in real life. Thank you very much. And you have to leave now so I can bring somebody else in to try the hot seat. Teaching options. That's And the next hand is 11. And open it up. to the table. Okay. Um, I need a volunteer. Come on, please. Down seat. Um, can we read it? Well, I think, I mean, uh, this is answering your question B. Can you read anything into it? Well, I don't think most people would not do it with a five card diamond suit. Uh, the only person I've ever seen do it with a five card suit is Brian Senior, who is an incredibly, or used to be an incredibly aggressive player. Um, most people, of course, would have seven, but uh, certainly in the third seat, uh, if you look at the hand that that person actually had, uh, taking away a load of bidding room by trying a three diamond bid is certainly not a silly thing to try. I, I certainly don't think you should try it first or second in hand. You might just as easily be preempting partner and making life difficult. Um, uh, Fifty-four, three, two, one. Um, hmm. Not sure of the the numbering here. Um, Jock, isn't it? Do I remember? Profile. Jock, yes. yes. Right. Okay. Hello. And you turn the mic on. Like he was counting down. Oh, okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Here we go. Um, uh, let me see. You are the dealer, and yes, indeed, we're only interested in the contract here, not the bidding. So this is a six spade contract. If you could do that for me, and we can launch straight into the play. Um, the lead is the Queen of Clubs. So off you go. Tell me about the hand. All right, we expect we have all six trumps. Our ace is seven. A club winner is eight. And three diamonds for 11. Mm. So any sensible place to generate a 12th trick? Uh, it's got to be the pair of red fours. Or, well, no. Jackal. I know what you mean. Yeah, you got two four card suits, uh, each one of which might provide uh, a threat. But there's no natural way of, of you can't. There's no suit you can establish and catch the last card. There's no finesse position. Uh, this is one of the rare hands where actually you're thinking squeezes straight away because you can't think of anything else to generate the tricks you need. Um, okay, um, I don't think they're going to let you get away with that. And uh, imagine what would he switch to? I don't think a diamond can cost, so he'd probably switch to a diamond. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so, um, so how are you going to play it then? Uh, since we right. squeeze theory straight away, and we'll be able to cash off our king queen of the isolated threat. Yeah, we certainly want to get rid of those, so we can be much more clear about what's going on. So, uh, draw the drops first. That sounds a good idea to me as well. Um, and I can, I can take the Club King now or not. Uh, I agree. I don't know. If, you'll have to take it sooner or later. I don't think it matters when. Um, yeah, good idea there. Crossover. And by cashing your... Uh, Extended winners in the single threat to uh, clarify exactly what's going on. Oh, sorry, I thought I, I thought I clicked on something. Obviously not. Okay, that's done. Uh, we've isolated the single threat so that uh, everything's clear. And now you're coming around. Now you're going to be really lucky in the rest of it because obviously your other threat card is the Jack of Hearts. Right. And that means you either need somebody to have the King and Queen or perhaps more likely that the, there's a 4 1 break. So that it then doesn't matter who's got the King and the Queen, even if, the, uh, the big, oh, if they're 4 1, only one person can guard the hearts in. But it's against the odds. You've got to be really lucky here, Jock, to make this contract. But still, there's nothing else to play for. So That's true. Mm -hmm. So I'll throw clubs as long as they can. I'm, in, I'm feeling embarrassed. I did not see what put this card on the second. Well, uh, uh, yeah, perhaps I should have been uh, drawing everybody else's attention to it. Um, mm -hmm. Because there is more than one diamond missing at the moment. Um, um, mm, is that the missing diamond? Mm. We were 4 1 at the beginning. So. We were, but what so, happened there? Were there were they... The embarrassment shows, I don't know. Mm. Right, okay. 13 or by now or not. So has he thrown the winning diamond or not? That's the question. Oh, if only we'd have remembered what. We'd be in a good yes. position here. Ah, you clever, clever person, you. You got it right. He had kept the seven of diamonds. In order to, uh, he threw the jack, hoping to fool you into thinking it was the last one, hoping that then you'd keep the four of diamonds as a winner. A uh, bit of a giveaway, maybe he had to go and throw in the queen of hearts. So, uh, if, if, he'd, if he'd have had a, a few more. By the way, uh, that's a good point to mention about uh, defense to, to having a squeeze performed on you. Normally, the only defense is deception. So, the earlier you spot the squeeze, the easier it is to actually do something deceptive. So uh, if, if you're going to have to unguard a suit, uh, unguard it early, and then go and throw away the last thing, a suit, which you're not unguarding, to convince the person that it's the other suit that you've unguarded. Um, but these things are a bit treacherous. If you're up against an average player, they don't know about squeezes, and they just play off their top winners. So unguarding anything is bad news. But if you know you're up against a good player who knows how to go and do these things, anticipate what it is going to do. Let's say the classic defense is unguarded earlier in a way that, and then look as though you're unguarding the other suit. Then they play that suit thinking, got him or got her, as the case may be. And no, 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 you um, it was the wrong thing to do. It's the other suit that he should have been playing. 
Thank you for that, Jock, and I see you've gone. So, I have one last one for you today. Um, let's make the... Oh, I never changed it, because I thought it would be more fun to actually play it out. So, let me go to the last hand of the day. I can only find it. And we do a position type to demo hand. Excellent. Okay. Uh... Okay, so export that to the table. And here we are. So volunteers, please. Or actually, just one volunteer. I don't need several. Uh, yes, you're right, uh, Sanjana. Uh, squeezes can often be broken up again if you see them by switching to the right card. Uh, but often people don't do it because they're worried that uh, it, that person has a ten of heart, ten, and he's worried the switch might uh, turn, uh, sort of holding by declare into a winner. Um, but you're right; uh, the right switch can often kill a squeeze. Come on, everybody! Uh, yeah, we can't sit here. Come on, B. Live a little. Sit in. Adam, you haven't played one for ages. Why don't you sit in? It's just a chit chat about a bridge hand, uh, Janie. It's not really scary. Sit in and try it. <laughs> yeah, come on. Um, Sanjanas, you saw I had to go and set the last one. Let's make this one together. Come on, sit at the table. Well, okay. Um, ah, hello, Skylark. Welcome back. So I'll try to read my notes here. Um, right. Uh, this is a real hand, so there's bidding, but whether it's relevant, I actually can't tell you. Um, it may just be it was a real hand and I just copied the uh, uh, copied the dealer at the table. So uh, the um, dealer actually passed. And uh, your partner opens a diamond. And then it's person passes. Uh, your partner's playing Akol, so he's shown 15 to 17 and a balance hand. Or just possibly a distributional hand with a singleton spade with 15 to 17 and he doesn't want to reverse into the heart suit or something. But the odds are is to balance 15 to 17. Oh, you can't find your unmute. Because um, uh, I, I don't know how it works for other people. But you need to click on the... The participants button at the bottom to get a list of all the participants, Annabelle. And then on the right hand side, you should get a list of everybody at the table. And you'll see a red slashed microphone next to your name. You click on that icon Got and it. that. Okay. Right, just let me get my page back up again. Okay. Uh, Okay, I'm only sitting here because no one else is, and I think we're so lucky to have You're you. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody just well, has. Yes, you are lucky. Me, <laughs> Thank you for doing it. We could have been here forever, and it's so embarrassing when my wife finds me starving and wanting food and drink at eleven o'clock at night. Thank okay, you. I think, I think 
I got six spades. I'm going to go to four spades. I would as well. I mean, there is a chance he has a single. She has yes. a singleton, but it's. But uh, I'll forgive him. Even then, it could be the right place to play. So. Uh, <laughs> would he forgive me? Mm, okay. So what's the lead? Uh, well, according to my notes, they invented the heart jack. Uh, okay. Oh, it was a singleton. Well, it's very annoying. Okay. Due diligence. How many tricks you got? And, right. Uh, um, okay. I've got. Seven. Well, I've, I've, I'm going to try for four spades. Uh, yeah, certainly. It looks like spade finesse is your option there, and yeah. then hope for a break. Um, uh, heart, you can do... I've got. Um, uh, I don't, that looks a bit suspicious, the jack, but I've, I should have three hearts. Uh, um, yeah, it could be jack ten nine. It's not clear. It's raining. You didn't leave the windows down, did you? No, I did not, and I don't have. To... And um, thank you, Kathy. So, so four, five, seven. Uh, do you know the most terrible thing is that I've got? To, can you hear the alarm? I have to. I have okay, to deal you deal with, with your. Deal with your I, I actually have to. I have to go and deal with I, this. Um, okay. I'm so sorry. Uh, are you coming back? <laughs> no, no, not for. Not for. I think I've got to. I. I have to. Um, I've left the water on outside, so I'm, I'm going to be about four, three or four minutes. Someone else will have to sit here. Uh, okay, all right. And look, look, it's not so hard. Look, this is a terribly easy hand. Come on, everybody. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, okay, you have to leave the... Oh, I can... Yes, my apologies. Okay, leave the table and off you go. Well, I've never had that happen before. <laughs> um, okay, uh, somebody come into the south seat, please. Now that you've all seen what an easy hand this is, surely you, uh... <laughs> Come on, Barbara. You're my heroine. You told me how to go and put hands directly into BBO teaching tables. Surely you can do me one more favor. I think my wife is going to find me here at 11 o'clock tonight, waiting for somebody to sit in. Uh, Adam, Kathy, even. Do you fancy it, Kathy? Thank you, Adam. Welcome. Okay, well, we're busy doing due diligence. We hope to play the space for an uncertain number of tricks, which right. makes it hard to count everything. Uh, what else have we got? So we're in four spades. I haven't been watching, actually, Alan. I've been dealing with one or two other things. I've just come uh, back okay. and see that okay. you were... <clears throat> Struggling. So, was there any bidding? Uh, no, we basically bid four spades, but they're showing a strong no trump hand. Okay. They led the jack of hearts, which could be double ten or it could be jack ten nine. So, my analysis is we seem to have three heart tricks likely, and I can throw my losing club. So, everything is about playing the spades and playing the diamonds, I think. Probably, probably got one diamond loser, probably regardless. If I bring the spades in, I'm going to make this. So we're missing the two, the six, the nine, the ten, the jack and the king. And if we had a miracle and they broke three, three. Well, it's a third of the time. A third of the time, we're going to have four spade tricks. And half the time, the king of spades is wrong. Yeah. You've got reasonable chances. Four spade tricks, three hearts, <clears throat> seven, two eight, diamonds for sure, two diamonds and the ten. <clears throat> so I think okay. we're going to. First thing is, how are you going to deal with the heart lead? Well, we're going to win it in dummy because we're going to play the four of spades up to the queen and see if we can. Well, I wouldn't block the heart suit. I, I mean, if they, if the finesse doesn't win. Mm. Uh, I'm okay, we, we'll, we'll, place the, jack, the jack of hearts. Let's let's hope it's not going to be from uh, a six card suit, should we? I I think there's not much. I, I suppose it could be jack ten nine to six. That would be a bit embarrassing to win and give them a rough. But I, I honestly, I I would unblock just to simplify any <coughs> anything later that might actually happen. There we go. No problem. Okay, good luck, Alan. Thank you very much. Your first uh, key moment coming up now. So, 
Are we going to see what happens with the spades? Yes, I think we are. We don't take our discard straight away, of course, because we can do it later on. So there's no... Uh, uh, well, it always happens to me. Happens mm -hmm. to you as well, apparently. Yes. Um, that has happened in real life. They switch to a spade. Ah, so... Switch to a club. Life. Switch to a club. So I now need to rise with the ace of clubs. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to get rid of my club loser on the queen of hearts now. Yep. Good job we unblocked. <coughs> and, um, yeah, okay. That was good advice, Alan. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, no! Oh, and now... <laughs> that is most unfair. It was a doubleton. Mm. Ooh, oh, dear. Looking bad now, Adam. Um, you need the diamond finesse, I think, to even get close to this contract. Um... How many tricks would that give you? Well, oh, spade you have you. You've got a spade loser there, haven't you? Regardless, because they've got three spades left. They have three spades left. Um, right, okay. I so, we're obviously going to draw the trumps or at least get rid of them. And we're obviously going to assume the diamond finesse is right. But that's not going to bring us up to the tricks we need. So, where else Ooh. can we find a trick? <coughs> so, we can get we can have a trick from a long diamond, either if they're three three or if we can use the eight as a threat against the hand that has four diamonds. You've also got the threats we're doing at the moment, whereby after we finesse the jack, you've got the ace opposite the queen. So you've got a threat in the one hand and the entry in the other. Okay. It would have to be a positional threat for that to work. But that would just give you one extra, uh, a threat card, actually. Where's the other threat card? There? It's going to be a club. I think so. Um, obviously, East has hearts, but since we're squeezing West, who has to have the King of Diamonds, there's not much point hanging onto a heart, which is a threat card against East. No. Um, so it would have to be a club. So we need to just bear that in mind. when we So we're going to there. take uh, another round of Trumps. Yes, yes. And we're going okay. to get rid of the Four of Hearts, which we don't need. Yeah, why not? Good idea. And so we've now seen four, eight, eight trumps. Uh, so there are still two out. One. No, no. We've, sorry, I've, I've rough. So we've seen nine trumps. There's one out, and that's a boss trump. So we use what we call the rule of one, and we say we'll leave them with that. Mm. And I would go on to step three, which is the count. How many winners do you have? So we have one, two, three, four. We've got four winners, uh, two, two spades, or three spades if they rough something, but uh, two spades and two diamonds is four. Okay, to start off with... The spades aren't winners. Remember, for a squeeze to work, you have to have all the winners okay. except one, right? Now, you don't have any winning spades at the moment because they do. Yes. So that means you don't have the count. Assuming the diamond finesse is right, you have two winners, the ace and the jack of diamonds. No squeeze is going to work while you only have two winners with six tricks to play. Okay, so we have to give a spade up. And then you create two additional winners and reduce the tricks. Yeah. So now you'll have four winners with five tricks to play. That's a much better position to be in to make a squeeze. So we have to give a stage up to rectify the count. We have to rectify the count in the stage three. Or stage four, now the plan. We rectify the count because it's not right. And okay, I'm, there we go. I'm going to um, let go of a club. Oh. Am I going to let go of a club or am I going to let go of a diamond? Mm. <clears throat> well, the nine of clubs is a threat. And the Queen of Diamonds is a threat, isn't it? Yes, the other threat, yes. Ace and Jack of Diamonds are winners, we're assuming the finesse works. So I think Queen I, of Diamonds I think is I a can threat. let go of the Three of Diamonds. Nine of Clubs is a threat. And Three of Diamonds is what you're going to discard? The Three of Diamonds, I think. 
Yeah, okay, go on. Three of diamonds, and you got it right. So just undo, and I'll show you why you shouldn't uh, cast your, throw away your, your club. Throw the five or four of clubs away. Right. Um, <clears throat> sorry, you... Well, just, just do it for me. Throw the four of clubs away. Yeah. You've got it right. Three of diamonds is the right card, right? Uh, because they will kill your threat. That's right. why it's the... Yeah. It's okay, you don't have to play right. So you absolutely got it right. The nine of clubs is a threat, but do not give them the chance to uh, to go and kill it, um, because then you will not have a threat on the thing. So you're absolutely right. The nine is a threat, but it needs to be kept guarded at the moment to stop them uh, penalising you. So back to the three of diamonds, you're absolutely right. That's the thing you've got to throw away to keep your uh, thing. Um, they'll probably play a club, do their best to... Um, Okay, and um, you'd have done this anyway. If uh, they hadn't done it for you, you'd have finessed the jack of diamonds and roughed it on. So here we are in a four card ending with um, an extended threat suit because the ace and jack of diamonds are really like owning the ace and ace and king. But they're two winners in yeah. make, We hope so I two threats. Queen of Diamonds, nine. Oh, you're all set here. Yeah. Um, and so, it's positional because the entry is in the wrong hand for the Queen of Diamonds threat. But it's positional on West, and that's the person you believe you're squeezing. So, you want to execute it? You want to see the pain? Oh, I'll change to it. Show everything for you. There we go, Adam. You can see everything. Everybody can see everything. Uh, so indeed, there they are. So they've got to keep the ten of clubs with a nine and dummy. So they're going to throw a nine. You're looking out for the single winner, the ten. You haven't seen it. You throw the ten away. And now you keeping the fingers crossed. Try the club diamond finesse. And it drops. So our queen has become. And there's the forehand. Come up, you just say. So well done. So as ever, uh, we do most of the hand was played just using normal bridge. We we uh, we arrange to throw away our club. We uh, hope that we're going to bring in the spades, only losing two of them. And only when everything goes wrong at the end do we find that we now need A, a bit of luck in the diamond suit, and B, a squeeze. And you did well to keep the club. I found, um, uh, let me think, this, this was a real hand. Why did I keep it? I, I think Declara got this far and threw away a club uh, so that Declara didn't keep the second, th they of course played a club and killed the threat and then suddenly Declare was reduced to playing for King Doubleton Diamond and it wasn't King Doubleton Diamond so Declare went down so that I imagine is why I got interested in the hand. I, I For various people I, I look over their hands and then give, give comments about them to uh, say what they could have done better. So and we I'm can sure that's where this came from. So well done and especially well done on, on keeping the club so um uh, you, you worked out it with your threat, and you did work out that you had to go and keep it guarded so that they didn't drop it. So I like that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Aloysius, and uh, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, we've got one last type of uh, positional squeeze to cover next week, and after that, I will be moving on to the double squeezes. Um, there are two types of double squeezes, and then once I've done those, I'm afraid I'll be leaving you, but... Uh, uh, that's some time in the future, so we have some more time to be. Can't see the threats. Uh, it's, uh, no, not easy to squeeze it. I say, there are a few, typically slam hands, actually, um, Janie, where immediately you see that, A, you need to do it by a squeeze, and B, what the threats actually are. But this hand, as a real-life hand, is much more typical, where you're doing ordinary things, 
in an ordinary sort of way as an ordinary person, and then suddenly you reveal, you pull back your shirt to reveal the S hidden underneath it, and you turn into super school <laughs> Okay, Alan. So one uh, one uh, thing we will um, this has been recorded, uh, and I will get the recording up onto YouTube um, as soon as I can after the uh, end of this session. Search for Cedars Squeezes. I take it you're no longer recording, Adam. I am. What? This is going on to the recording as well? Yeah, it's, I suppose I could stop, couldn't I? I think you could.